Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and this week I am making a giant carrot cake. No, like an actual carrot. So uh, not just like carrot. No, a carrot carrot cake. Got it. A carrot cake that's carrot cake inside. Oh. I make new cakes every week, so please subscribe to this channel and help me hit three million subscribers. It would be a lovely birthday gift. Oh, and hit the notification bell so you know when my new cakes are ready. To make this cake, I baked nine carrot cakes, removed them all from their pans, leveled them, and then cut the caramelization away from the bottom. If you would like my carrot cake recipe, which is delicious, you can find it on a playlist called Yo's Recipe Box. Here, look, put it in a box. Now all of my cakes are ready for simple syrup, but are they ready for Sir Squeeze? Now my carrot cake is really, really moist, so I simple syruped a little more lightly than I usually do. I don't know if you've noticed, but Sir Squeeze is now in pin form. They say you haven't made it until you've been pinned. They do say that. Now I need to ice the top of each cake with a nice layer of Italian meringue buttercream. I'm going to ice all of them except one of the tiniest layers. My Italian meringue buttercream recipe is in the same Yo's Recipe Box playlist up here. I need to flip each of these cakes onto their side and start sandwiching them together. But first, I just wanna trim a little bit off the side of each cake because this will actually be the bottom and I don't want these cakes rolling away from me. Have I don't ever rolled away from you? No, but I have nightmares about things like that. It's not funny. <laughs> So you want to be really careful, but essentially you just want to line them all up from biggest to smallest, and you can already see like the giant carrot forming. You're making a carrot out of carrots. The carrot cake is made out of carrots, and the giant carrot is made out of carrot cake. It's, just, it's too much. It's a lot. It's a lot. Then that with that strap bothering you? It's gonna be nuts. Guys, this strap is, I don't mean to interrupt, but this strap is really bothering Jeremy. So it's just, distracting. Yeah. He is not fascinated enough by the fact that I made a giant carrot. So just <laughs> give me a minute. Yes, Jeremy, Jeremy notices a strap, but not a hair out of place. <laughs> I'll be like this. Jeremy's like, you're good, you're good. <laughs> that apron strap. My buttercream is nice and set within the layers, so it's time to carve a giant carrot. This is a good one because it's really easy to find a, a model. It's not like watermelons. Carrots are good models. I've seen quite a few carrots in my life, so I did it by eye. And the good thing is, you don't want this cake to be perfectly symmetrical. I really hate saying that. <laughs> Gonna say, that must that be hurt hurts to say. me. Yeah. But you don't. You want it to be like a realistic, natural, organic carrot. Yes, Jocelyn, organic. right? Yes. You could even carve like a bump on your carrot. I have seen some strange carrots. I once got like a Siamese twin carrot. Ooh. It was like a set of legs. <laughs> wow. It was really cool, but eventually I had to eat it. This is a great starter cake because even though it's big, you could make it at any size and the carving is really easy. You don't need to be intimidated by this type of carving. This carrot doesn't come to enough of a point at the end for me. So what I'm gonna do is utilize some of my cake humps and I'm just gonna sandwich them to the bottom of the cake so that I can make more of a point. I actually trimmed my humps with some circle cutters just to get, what do I call that? <laughs> One more time. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> so that I could create smaller circles at the end of the cake and the carrot would come to a point. If you want ideas for other Easter cakes you can make that vary from really easy to super hard, there's an Easter playlist right over here giant carrot to that playlist. I'm going to crumb cake, crumb cake this Coke. <laughs> crumb cake this Coke. 
<laughs> I'm gonna crumb coat this cake with my Italian meringue buttercream and my small offset spatula, and then I'm gonna put it in the fridge to chill. I actually like to have a variety of spatulas around when I'm crumb coating and icing because I always seem to change my mind throughout the process. Because of this, we've put together a crumb coat and chill deluxe bundle at howtocakeit.com. It includes a variety of spatulas, this apron so you know what you're doing, Sir Squeeze a lot, and his pin. Maybe Sir Squeeze wants to wear his own pin. Well, he's like that, you know what I mean? My crumb coat is chilled. Time to ice this cake one more time with my Italian meringue buttercream and chill it again. Ah! <laughs> I got cocky. <laughs> Man. The hardest thing about this cake is that you have to cover it in orange fondant and you have to roll out quite a big piece of fondant to cover your whole cake. I colored my fondant myself with some orange food coloring and I did add a bit of ivory food coloring just to make the orange a little more natural. You don't want a neon carrot. Don't trust a neon carrot. It's not organic if it's neon. You know what I mean? Yes. First sign. These are, <laughs> these are carrot alternative facts. <laughs> That's okay. a website if I've ever <laughs> Now that I've rolled out my large sheet of natural orange fondant, I pick it up on my French rolling pin by draping it backwards, meaning the icing sugar coated side is face up. And then I pick that up and drape it over the whole carrot. I used my organic hands to smooth, <laughs> Jocelyn, Jocelyn to smooth the fondant around the carrot, tucking the excess down underneath, because you really want to keep that rounded sort of cone shape that a carrot has. I smooth the fondant as best I can, but I end up cutting away the excess and I'm left with a very small seam on the bottom half. Don't worry, it will be covered by the organic greenery that comes out of the carrot. I need to make all of the little indents, the lines on carrots that run horizontally across the carrot. So I used a sculpting tool that's actually known as a veining tool and I created all of these lines. If your carrot cake is a little soft, you don't want to puncture your cake, so feel free to chill it for a bit before you move on to creating the indents. This is an organic carrot, so I wanted it to appear like fresh from the dirt, not too dirty but I just needed to enhance those indents with a little bit of light cocoa powder brushed inside. It's like makeup for a carrot indent. You know what it is, it's contouring, I was gonna say right? Something. Carrot contouring. Carrot contouring, which yeah. is, I mean, all carrots are doing it right now. This carrot needs Greenery. Oh, actually? It doesn't? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> so it's already done, Jocelyn. Before I get to the organic greenery on this carrot, I need to let you guys know about Replicate. <laughs> That's the best pun ever. <laughs> I am working on a super secret project and I'm looking for amazing bakers. This is what I want you to do. Go to the Replicate playlist right here, choose a cake that you love, and make it. Replicate it. Cake it! Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Help, Jocelyn. That just works. That is so good. Take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram using the hashtag Replicate. There's more instructions in the description below. Replicate. For the greenery, I made some green fondant, just sort of a nice pale natural green. And then I rolled it into tubes of various lengths. They were about a half inch thick. And before I was done rolling the tubes, I inserted a floral wire down the middle of the tube. And then I continued to roll the tube, securing the wire inside. I created about seven of these tubes with the wire inside. I need to join these tubes together at their base where they grow out of the carrot. Because if you look at a carrot, it's kind of like they're twisted together and then they're free. They sprouted from the carrot. I used a wooden cake dowel 
And what I did is I took the exposed wire that is extending from each one of the stems and wrapped it around the dowel because later we'll insert this whole thing into the cake leaving the greenery exposed. Once your bouquet of green stems is ready, <laughs> we're gonna create the leaves before attaching it to the cake. For the leaves, I rolled out more of my green fondant. This time I used a fondant rolling pin and a non-stick mat because I wanted to roll it nice and thin. And then I used a just a regular pointed daisy cutter. So it's actually a cutter used to make daisies, but I'm gonna use it in this cake to make the leaves. To add them to my stems, first I used my sharp paring knife just to make little cuts on the ends of my stems. You don't want these stems to be big enough that they'll break off. It's just sort of a small detail you can add. To add the leaves, I brush on a little bit of clear piping gel and add them to the end of every single stem. Remember they're at different heights, so some of the stems are shorter, some are longer. All of this will just make it look more natural, more organic. As a final touch, I just wanna paint this greenery with a little bit of green color dust. Give it some variation. So color dust is just like luster dust without the luster, it's less fancy. And I mix it the same way I do luster dust with a little bit of clear food grade alcohol and then I brushed it on all of the stems and all of the leaves and let it dry. Another good way to tell if a carrot is not organic is if it has sparkly metallic greenery. That is a bad sign. So no neon carrots and no sparkly metallic greenery. I don't really do dirt, but in this case, I surrounded my big giant carrot with a ton of Oreo crumbs. The greenery is dry, it looks great, it's ready to go, and all we have to do is insert it into the carrot. So we're gonna slowly push the dowel and those wires into the carrot until it hits the base of the greenery. If you can't get it up tight enough, you can just throw some Oreo crumbs over it. Because there would be dirt right there, right? If it's organic, there would be dirt. Do non-organic carrots not grow in the ground? They do, but they don't grow in organic dirt. Oh, okay. Right? Right. <laughs> and the other great thing about this big carrot is it is so versatile. I mean, think about it. If you just make some pale yellow fondant, you can make a giant parsnip, okay? Everyone wants that cake. Who doesn't want a giant parsnip? And you can make it out of parsnip cake. <laughs> Thanks for watching How to Cake It. Don't forget to subscribe and help me hit three million and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss the parsnip cake next week. We are not doing a parsnip cake next week. You're not doing a parsnip cake next week. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And don't forget to replicate it. Check out the replicate playlist and I can't wait to see your cakes. I can't wait to see how you cake it. Another one. I can't wait to, I can't, I, I can't even talk. <laughs> you overpunned yourself. <laughs> I'm just, I'm out punned.